Yogi should be aware of thinking at the mind door. Every time you think, know the thinking mind is thinking, thinking, planning, planning, imagining, imagining, and so on. At the moment it takes place. By practicing Satipatthana meditation, you can develop insight knowledge stage by stage. From the insight into mind and body, up until path, fruition and enlightenment. However, the first day of practice, Concentration and mindfulness are not yet strong enough for you to observe and clearly comprehend all the phenomena that arise at the six and those. Nivarana, mental hindrances, hinder your concentration. So today we have to listen Nivarana, mental hindrances. Whatever you are doing, you will find that you have some kinds of obstacle or some kinds of hindrances to overcome. Mental hindrances are negative factors of your meditation. They hinder the gaining of your concentration. With regards to the mental hindrances, Buddha said in the Mahasadipatthana Sutta, Bhikkhu, a bhikkhu dwells contemplating the Dhamma in the Dhammas in the five hindrances. A bhikkhu dwells on the contemplation of the Dhamma in the Dhamma in the five hindrances. What are the five hindrances? The first one Kamichanda, sense desire, is the first one. Buddha instructs us how to deal with sense desire in that Mahasadipatthana Sutta. Sense desire is the first of the mental hindrances, Nivarana. Sense desire means desire for sensual object. Desire, attachment, craving, longing, lust. All kinds of tanna loba are sense desire. Tanna loba in Pali. It means the desire for visible object, desire for audible object, desire for smells, desire for odors, Desire for taste, desire for tangible and mental objects. Desire for anything is called sense desire. When sense desire is present in yogis, yogis know there is sense desire in me. During practicing meditation, when you have thoughts of desire, thoughts of lust or craving, or thoughts of attachment, 
then yogi should be aware of the presence of sense desire in you. Yogi, we know that there's sense desire present in me. You must mentally note desire, 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 or attachment, 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 or craving, craving, craving. You note immediately and quickly, simply noting. Since desire is present in me, Santawa present means something exists because it occurs repeatedly. Good thought and bad thoughts cannot coexist. These thoughts are not really present. At the moment, yogis come to know them because these thoughts cannot coexist with the knowing of them. As soon as you know, as soon as you note, these thoughts cannot coexist. But these, since these thoughts arise in meditators again and again, they are said to be existence, they are present. At the moment of observing them, at the moment of observing the mental hindrances, they are already gone. Maybe they last a fraction of a second. Present means something that has occurred that very moment. So yogi have to recognize what is present, existence, or occurs repeatedly. It occurs because you like it. Desire to desire you have desire it. When a desire is present, meditators know there is such and such desire in me. And when sense desire is absent in meditators, they know. There's no sense desire in me. Yogis know. Yogis know when sense desire is absent in me, absent in you. Absent, asandan in Bali. That means two things. First, it means not existing because it does not occur or it has been abandoned. Second, it means it is absent simply because it does not arise. Or, first, it arises in meditators. They observe it, and then it disappears. When it disappears, it will be absent. Sometimes meditators notice the absence of desire. It just does not arise in them. Sometimes meditators feed desire and they take note of the desire. Then it despair, and they notice the disappearance of desire in them. 
So whatever is the case, yogis must be mindful of the absence of sense desire when it is absent. Why good thoughts or bad thoughts arise? They are causes of the arising of good thoughts or arising of bad thoughts. Generally speaking, there are two kinds of what we call reflection. We call them attitudes of viewing. They are unwise reflection, ayoni samandasikara, and wise reflection, yoni samandasikara. Unwise reflection lead to unwholesome thoughts, and wise reflection leads to wholesome thoughts. Unwise reflection means inexpedient reflection or disadvantageous reflection. Reflection on the wrong track, so we call them wrong reflection, ayoni samandasikara. They are the kinds of reflection that take the impermanent to be permanent, the unsatisfactory to be satisfactory, the soulless to have a soul, and the ugly to be beautiful. So when you take Namarupa to be permanent, satisfactory, substantial, beautiful, something to be attached to, then you have this kinds of unwise reflection. These reflections are unwise because they cause unwholesome deeds, unwholesome thoughts to arise. So unwise reflection are the general cause of the arising of unwholesome thoughts. Remember, unwise reflection are the general cause of the arising of unwholesome thoughts. Can you repeat after me? Unwise reflection. Unwise reflection. Unwise reflection. Unwise reflection. Are the general cause. Are the general causes. Of the arising of. Of the arising of. Unwholesome thoughts. Unwholesome thoughts. Unwise reflection. Unwise reflection. Are the general cause. Are the general causes. Of the arising of. Of the arising of unwholesome thoughts. Unwholesome thoughts. So Ayoni Samanasikara, you take the Namarupa, you take the things to be permanent, you are unwise. You take the Namarupa uh, to be satisfactory, you are unwise. You take the Namariva as substantial, you are unwise. You take the Namariva as beautiful, something to be attached to, you are unwise. That means you take Namariva to be Necha Sukha Subha, Necha Sukha Atta Subha, then you are unwise. So can you follow me to remember this? Taking the Namarupa 
Taking the Nama Rupa to be permanent, to be permanent, satisfactory, satisfactory, substantial, substantial, beautiful, beautiful. something to be attached to, something to be attached to, is unwise reflection. Ayoni so manasikara. Ayoni so manasikara. Taking the Nama Rupa. Taking the Nama Rupa. To be permanent. To be permanent. Satisfactory. Satisfactory. Substantial. Substantial. Beautiful. Beautiful. Something to be attached to. Something to be attached to. Is unwise reflection. Is unwise reflection. Ayoni so manasikara. Ayoni so manasikara. So you need to remember. You are unwise, unwise. Reflection of the opposite kinds are wise reflection. They are experience reflection or advantageous reflection or beneficial reflection. Reflection that are on the right track These are the kinds of reflection that take the impermanent to be impermanent, the unsatisfactory to be unsatisfactory, soullessness to be without soul, the ugly not to be beautiful, and the desirable to be undesirable. It is a correct way of viewing things. Buddha said that everything is impermanent, unsatisfactory, and insubstantial. So yogis are not to be attached to anything. When you see things in this way, you are said to have this kinds of wise reflection that is a right and correct reflection or that is the, the right and correct view of things. That is wise reflection, yoni so manasikara. So need to remember what the Buddha said it is very true. Everything is impermanent, unsatisfactory, and substantial. You are observing the whole day. You need to know. You need to know. They are permanent or impermanent. You need to uh, realize. So need to remember Buddha was, can you follow me? Everything is impermanent. Everything is impermanent. Unsatisfactory. Unsatisfactory. And insubstantial. And insubstantial. Yogi are not to be attached to anything. We are not to be attached to anything. Taking the impermanent to be impermanent. Taking the impermanent to be impermanent. The unsatisfactory to be unsatisfactory. Yeah. Soullessness to be without soul. Soullessness is to be without soul. The ugly not be uh, the ugly not to be beautiful. The ugly not to be beautiful. And the undesirable to be undesirable. The undesirable to be undesirable. Is the correct way. Is correct way of doing wise reflection. Wise reflection. That is wise reflection. You need some manasikara. You take the impermanent. Now you are observing every phenomena. They are permanent or impermanent. Buddha said it true or not. You need to confirm. You need to know. And they are unsatisfactory or satisfactory, you need to confirm they are under your control or not, you need to know. 
they are desirable or undesirable. If you see the kinds of anicca, dukkha, anatta, and asiva, this is the correct way of viewing. It is wise refreshing, beyond the soul, manasikara. Thus, desire arises in you because you have unwise refreshing. They are objects that are conditioned for sensuality, conditioned for sense desire to arise. You see things that you consider to be beautiful. You see things that you you think are desirable, and then you develop a kind of attachment to all these things and experience a sort of craving. This craving or attachment arises because you have a wrong attitude. You reflect incorrectly on these things. So when sense desire arises in meditators, they know, they may notice that the desire arises in them because they are reflecting unwisely. They have viewed the objects of sensual desire in a wrong way. And they, they think they are lasting, satisfying, substantial, and beautiful. In meditation, you can notice this and become aware of it. Because I have unwise reflection, this sense of desire arises in me. You need to aware. And then Yogi also knows the reason why the abandoning of the uh, reason sense desire comes to be. The abandoning of sense desire can be achieved in two ways. That is by observing it and by cultivating wise reflection on the objects as having the nature of foulness. Meditators may attain jhana contemplating on the concept of foulness. And Buddha said, this body is not desirable, not beautiful, and not auspicious. Wise reflection on this object can cause the abandonment of sense desire. Or when practitioner have reached jhana, depending on the concept of foulness or taking the concept of foulness as the objects of meditation, they may be able to get rid of sense desire. In vipassana meditation, just by being mindful, this sense desire is removed. This sense desire is abandoned. When you are aware of its absence, you know the cause of the disappearance of the sense desire. Because I have the wise reflection, the correct attitude, or the correct views towards these objects, the sense desire will disappear. Sometimes yogis notice the cause of the disappearance of sense desire. 
then they also know why this abundance and desire won't arise again in the future. That means when yogis become uh, arahan, the sense desire was abandoned, we never return to you. And they know the reason by which not aris arising of the abundance of desire comes to be. They know that by attainment of mega cheta, path consciousness, by reason of path consciousness, the sense desire that has been abandoned will never return. By attaining path consciousness, sense desire, kamichanda is completely eradicated. This happens when yogis attain arahatud, final stage. It pertains to the attainment of state, the attainment of megacheta path consciousness. So when yogis have sense desire, they have come to know why sense desire arises. They know why sense desire disappear, and they know why sense desire is abandoned momentarily or temporarily, Tetinga Pahana and Vikambana Pahana. What can yogi do when sense desire arises? Yogi make this sense desire the object of your meditation. Yogi, con uh, yogi dwells on it, yogi contemplate on it. Yogi take note of the desire. Yogi must see the, the, the true nature of this, this state by just by being noted, the desire will disappear. And in the commentary, it point, pointed out six things yogis can do to abandon such desire. They can be done when yogis are out of vipassana meditation. First, meditators can take up meditation on the foulness of the body, looking at the corpse or dwelling on the 32 parts of the body. Practitioners learn this kinds of meditation and then their practice will help them to abandon sense desire. And second way is the practice of meditation on foulness so that they reach the jhana stage. When yogi reach the jhana stage, they will be able to abandon sense desire. And the third way is controlling the faculties of the senses. That means yogis control the senses, yogis control their eyes, their ears, their nose, and so on, so that no thoughts can arise in them through one of the six and doors. And the fourth way is practicing moderation with respect to food. 
it immoderately we help to abandon sense desire when we eat too much we will have more sense desire we will have more desire for food so when eating yogi should not feel the the stomach to the rim they leave room for water it is enough for the comfort of yogis who have set their mind to us reaching nibbana to the cessation of suffering it is enough for the comfort of anybody whose mind is set towards reaching the state of nibbana cessation of all suffering this piece of advice tell us how to eat comfortably moderation in food means just eating and avoiding filling our stomach to the rim and the fit where is having a good friend this is really a clear nambeta a friend family on the path or dhamma friends to have a good friend clear nambeta is very essential clear nambeta your friend is contented he or she is not greatly attached to anything we are clear na good friends when you have a good friends you can have good advice you can learn from your friends and take him or her as an example oh she is so content that she not greatly attached to anything so that kinds of friends is good so a good friends who has no sense desire can help you to abandon sense desire and the sixth way is practicing suitable talk to abandon sense desire yogi should talk about the fullness of the body they should talk about the bad result of attachment and so on so these six things lead to the abandonment of sense desire and buddha says sense desire is like a debt so if we have a debt we have to quickly uh, we have to take a prompt action sense desire is like a debt take a prompt action to remove it so in the same way when we have sense desire we should not support we want more and more desire never finish want this want that and many things we want we attach to so sense desire is like a debt take a prompt action to remove it that means simply note and quickly remove it and also other nivaranas during the practice they may be they, they may be in they may be many hindrances yogi have to encounter pya bada nivarana tinna meda nivarana uddicha gogoja nivarana sense desire a will slot and drop all restlessness and worry skeptic get down in the practice 
all these new runners need to be noted quickly and remove it, then your mind become purified. You have nothing to do, uh, to uh, nothing uh, to be hindered, and then concentration getting strengthened, and you can see the true nature of the Namarupa process. So we will continue tomorrow. This Nivarana Kamichanda. We have to stop our discourse for today by practicing vipassana meditation, by observing every phenomena occurring at the six and doors, by noting, rising, falling, sitting, touching, seeing, hearing, bending, stretching, continuously and meticulously. May all yogis be liberated from all suffering. May all yogis realize the real peace in the very near future. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Ekaya no ayam bekawe mega sadhanam we so diyam so gabari dewanam samade gamayam dogadomenasanam atingamayam nyayasa Adigamaya Nivanasa Sachikiriya Yadidam Jadara Sadivadana Kadame Jadaram Ida Vekawe Beku Kaye Kaya Nubasi Viharati Adabi Sambhajanam Sattima Vinaya Loke Abhijadomanasam Vedanasu Vedana Nubasi Viharati Adabi Sambhajanam Sattima Vinaya Loke Abhija Domenasam Jaita Jaita Nubasi Viharati Atabhi Sambhajanam Sattima Vinaya Loge Abhijadomenasam Dhamesu Dhammanubhasi Viharati Atabi Sambhajanam Sattima Vinaya Loge 
के इंग्लिश ट्रांसलेशन दिस इज द ओनली वे बेगुस फॉर द प्यूरिफिकेशन ऑफ बींग्स फॉर द ओवरकमिंग ऑफ सोरो एंड लेमेंटेशन फॉर द डिसपीयरेंस ऑफ पेन एंड ग्रीफ for reaching the noble path for the realizations of nirvana namely the four foundations of mindfulness what are the four here in this teaching bhikkhus the bhikkhus does contemplating the body in the body ardent Clearly comprehending and mindful, removing desire and discontent in the world. Bhikkhus dress contemplating the feeling in the feeling, ardent, clearly comprehending and mindful, removing desire and discontent in the world. Bhikkhus dwells contemplating the consciousness in the consciousness, ardent, clearly comprehending and mindful, removing desire and discontent in the world. Bhikkhus dwells contemplating the dharma in the dharma, ardent, clearly comprehending and mindful. Removing desire and discontent in the world. Imaya dhamma nu dhamma badi badiyam bodham bujemi. Imaya dhamma nu dhamma vati vadiya dhamma bujemi Imaya dhamma nu dhamma vati vadiya Sangam Bhujemi Imaya Dhamma Nu Dhamma Vati Vatiya Madha Vitara Bhujemi Imaya Dhamma Nu Dhamma Vati Vadiya Acharya Pujami Adha Imaya Vadaya Jara Maranama Bari Moje Sami Idam Eponya Asawakaya Sadhguru Mahārāj 
Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.